Robert said on the countdown, pretty Ricky on the high line. I think we need to buy a new stage. They just put a hole in it. Yeah. Got to do the roll call, of course. 50's in the house. Eminem's in the house. The new gun to catch is here. Lloyd Banks and Tony Yeo. What's good, fellas? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Welcome back, man. Now, M, the last time we saw you, you shut things down at the BET Awards, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's been, uh, we haven't had you for a face-to-face -face interview. Why is it so rare that the public gets to see Eminem nowadays? What's going yeah, on? Why is it like that? <laughs> I actually need him to make my music, so he'd be busy. Yeah, I'm actually, like, working constantly in the studio, but... You know, for for me to be able to create the songs and 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 do what I've been doing, like to the rare performances that I do get to do, you know, it's like I enjoy them so much because that's at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons that you create music for, you know, it's to provide it for the crowds. But. You know, in the same token, I've got a lot, lot of, lot of artists on my label that I've got to make music for and produce for, yeah. and also rap. You know, at the same time. So. And they definitely ready for my new album, right? Yeah. And, you know. All right. We've been so working on that. Why are you in the creation of your new album? I'm gonna ask all of y'all because y'all all have y'all run. How how often do y'all actually get to see Eminem? I see him. I get a chance, I go to Detroit and work with him. Actually, the Rio, we recorded four records, but three of them I actually ended up on in... I ended in like up, two days. In, yeah, like, two in days. like two days. And then one, the, the fourth one is actually on my album. I kept that. I said, nah, I can't get out of where I need to hold on to that one. Yeah, the song we just performed, actually, 50 had a verse and a hook on it. And uh, he had just came into town, and I made the beat. And... 50 just took the first beat I made, ran in the other room with it, and like, I don't know, 15 minutes later, came back, was like, yo, check this out. And I was like, all right, well, you know, it was give dope. me a chance to yeah. throw a verse on it <laughs> and see what happens. And then, you know, then we put Cassius on it, and then we put, you know, uh, Thanks. we put That's Banks true. on it, and, and it all came together. Put Yayo, mm -mm, mm -mm. Like Yayo in the back, you know, hyping it up. Uh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, besides you collaborating with, of course, the G, you and the fam, the Shadyville fam, you also do real hot collaborations with a young man named Akon. Yeah. And yeah. So like actually, we just had him. You behave, you behave. Some we just that. had him. <laughs> we just had him here on the couch, and you know what? This is what he had to say about you. Think of all the collabos that you've had in the past year. What's what's the most special one to you? The one I did with Eminem. Okay. You gotta think like Eminem had officially retired, like he was done. So for him to come out of retirement and do that record with me was an honor, man. Like that was the highlight. So M. That's my man. Yeah. Are That's you my man. Really, 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 really out of retirement right now? I don't know where I said. <laughs> I don't know when I said I was retiring. I don't know wh wh where that came. Like, show me a sound bite where I said I'm retiring. I said it. Because he was needed to go back to help me. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Split that's what happened. <laughs> and then after I nah. said it, they ran with it. Yeah. And they kept saying it over and over and over. And it felt like you was retiring the whole time. But, it, you know, you just was working. Yeah, see, really what I said was I'm going to fall back from the rap end of things and produce the artists on my label. Right. Mm -hmm. And people took that as, oh, he's getting older now, he's retiring, you know, he's he's done his thing in the rap game, and, and you know, what else can he say? He's, he's, he's pretty much said everything that you could probably possibly say in the, in the music business, you know, so where else is there for him to go? But, I mean, I have so much more to say. Me? I know you got a lot to say. Yeah, I got a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you I got, got a lot, lot of things going with him. You know, this, this past year, is a lot. There's a lot to talk about. I'm sure everyone wants to know how he feels about, you know, proof he has some, some big losses. And Let's at the same time, us. I mean, like, when you get a chance to put in his music, if you, if you are an Eminem fan, you have any Eminem history, you know that he is able to capture pain on the record better than the majority of hip-hop. So you should look forward to a classic album. This next album. And give us one other issue that you're about to tackle right now. 
Tupac. Give us something else that you're about to tackle right now. What else is going well, on? If he gives you that, then what, how's it going to impact when you get ready to do it? <laughs> you get, it's a sneak attack. Everything's a sneak attack right, right now. This is yeah, really that's tough true. right that's, now. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, you know, security. What are you going to get me for Christmas? You know, <laughs> yeah, <buddy>. like, <laughs> what's, my, what's my Christmas present? Well, <laughs> well, what can we expect from this young man about right here? How about that? From this young man? That's yeah, a great who's, question. Who's about, to, who's about to get it popped? What can we expect from him then? Go get the re-up tomorrow. Yeah, you can get a chance to yeah. get yeah. Go get that. Okay. And you will get a chance to hear all That's right. You get a of our new artists. First look at everything. You know, um, you get a chance to hear Cassius, Bobby Creek, yeah. Stat Quo. Yeah. Which, you know, um, honestly, man. I'm on there, too. And me and 50 have three songs together. There's three. Three songs together, and we have, like, put it this way. We're all over the album. All over it. But, Which means you need but it. But so is, so is the new talent, too. So That's it's right. like, you know, when it became the idea of a mixtape and we was going to put it out on the streets or whatever, and then the quality of the music that was being handed in was like, this can't be a mixtape. This We, we got to put this out. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they're going to love to hear it tomorrow when it hits stores and y'all better go get yes, the real. Look, these guys are not going anywhere. I know the ladies on the yeah. 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 Now, if I didn't know you had the other two artists, you had two of your other artists in the audience, they here? Pardon? You had two of your other audience in the yeah. artists, they said that cool. Two other audience in the artists? Cool. Bobby, cool. Two other artists in the audience, man! They here! Cool. Where they at? We got a camera on them or whatever? Where what they up, what up, what up? Stat. Uh, Stat and Bobby Creek. Welcome back and watching 106.4 BT Top 10 Live. If you're just tuning in, we got 50 Cent, Eminem, Cassius, yeah. Lloyd Banks, Yeah Yo, they are in the building and they just performed their hot single off of Eminem Presents the Re-Up, which hits stores Mayana tomorrow. Go cap it, right? Tomorrow! Yeah. This is a great time for music. Tomorrow. It definitely it's a lot of good music in the stores, you know what I mean? And then tomorrow the Re-Up hits. Yeah, who else is looking look for? There's a lot of too. crap in stores, I did too. A, I did a song with on uh, Sierra's but, album. That album comes out tomorrow. It's a few albums that's out there. And you got Snoop, you got Jay-Z, you got Jay-Z, you got everybody coming. What does the re-up signify? The re-up First of all, uh, as far as Jay-Z doing the numbers that, that, that he did, uh, I feel like breathes like new life in the hip hop. Yeah, it does, definitely. You know, it's like it lets you know that we can still do music, period. It, br it breathes new life, but, you know, it lets you know that you can still do those numbers and be successful. Yeah. Successful, but um, as far as the re up, um, we brought it back to the basics, man. You know, to, to, to the days where you actually had to show and prove, like, everybody on this label had to show and prove to, to, you know, to us, you know, whoever signed to G-Unit Records, whoever signed to Shady Records, whoever signed to Aftermath Records, they got to be able to spit, and you got to be able to actually prove your talent. Yeah, I you mean, gotta I come remember, with it. I remember, like, really, like, days standing on stage at shows and having to really prove myself, and nowadays it feels like just anybody can rap. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Y'all bring up a real interesting point when y'all talk about those numbers. Both of y'all are going ten times platinum. You think you still think artists can go ten times I platinum? Th watch me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No set. Um, at, 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 at the fifth? Uh, at the fifth? Watch me. Watch me out there, okay? Well, as we have watched both of y'all success. Both of you guys are very successful CEOs of two very successful labels. What is the hardest decisions that you've had to make as boss men? Wow. I guess when to stop pouring marketing dollars into a project. You know, when you reach the point where the general public isn't going out to purchase the CD, regardless if you like have a personal interest in the artist or the material and you understand the process because you work with them, you gotta know when to just stop and move to the next project or to the next thing, you know? 
I think that's the toughest thing because you know someone's life is their life. You know, it's not just a CD. It's, it's not just, you know, anything. Especially when they haven't had, when they haven't already acquired the finances that come with having a successful project. You know? Well, what about you guys, Isaiah Banks? Y'all coming up what about it? The ladies have been waiting for you to speak, Banks. You know the, the rose petals are going to be thrown to your feet any minute now. But what's it like working underneath these guys? I mean, Let me is say that I grew up with them, and they wasn't that handsome before. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I grew up with them when we was young. I don't remember <laughs> nobody screaming like, oh, man. Well, wait, 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 wait. If you want to bring it to that, if, if you, are they screaming for Banks, ladies? <laughs> they love you. Are they loving you? Yeah, yo, ladies. <laughs> what about your boy, 50 Cent? Yeah, we made now, it, we made it. Now, what's it, what's it like working under these two for real? Pressure. Pressure. It took me about how long it took me to finish my verse. I had about eight balls. Yeah. I flew in to Detroit. It took me about an hour and a half to do eight balls. Cause M hears stuff that nobody else hears. It took him about like ten minutes <laughs> to write to, <laughs> to write, write the verse, was, but you know, I always it. wanted to sound like I know Banks' potential. You know, when he gets on a record, it's like I know how he can sound, like when he puts that you know the I call it the McGruff you know the ah, the growl on the record you know and I don't know how come uh, <laughs> um, so something about the ladies feeling everybody but uh, me and Cash is over not here. true <laughs> not true you kind of left us out and like went yeah, to the yeah. next this question. Has like, a bit of no, going you, think, on. you don't think Eminem sexy? That's not exactly not what I said. Let it be known. Let it be known. Wait a minute. Let it be known. Em, no, you got you, you, you got did, the you prettiest did. eyes no, no, in the wait, whole wait, entire wait, wait, wait. industry. <laughs> they're, they're cool you got the right. sexiest <laughs> eyes in the industry. And matter of fact, matter of fact, <laughs> as we go into the next video, Bow Wow, you know he's doing it real big, and I just wish. I had eyes like you, cause shorty, you fine. Basically. We got more with these guys. Let me know. Number eight on the countdown, Bow Wow, Chris Brown, shorty like mine. Of course, yeah. right now, we want to test M and Fifth's lyrical skills since they both know each other very well. Lyrical so, so, yeah. so, so. Is my mic on? Your mic is on. Your mic is on. Lyrical skills? Your lyrical skills. Lyrical skills. Yes, lyrical lyrical skills. skills. We're going to give you some lyrics of some of your songs and we want to see if y'all can guess which ones we're talking about. Is that cool? Okay. What's the first one? First one's for 50. Hey. It's one of M's lines right here. And all of this controversy circles me. The way I am? Absolutely right. 50's right. This is for you. You ready? Yeah. Now, shorty, she in the club. She dancing for dollars. She got a thing for the Gucci, the Fendi, the Prada. <laughs> I don't know what you heard about me. Uh-oh. With a game P -P. P -P. Out of me. <laughs> P -P. Right. Okay. Next one's for 50. You're going to know this one. His arms are sweaty, knees weak. Lose yourself. Yeah. You're gonna lose yourself in the music the moment, you moment. You better never let it go. I got one. The last one. You ready, Em? You can't have it your way. How do you want it? I take it to the candy shop. I lick the lollipop. Go ahead, girl. Don't you stop. Keep going till you hit the spot. They know that song. So what is it like when the two of y'all on stage together, man? Oh, man, it's a lot of fun. Like, for me, it's, it's ill, like, because... Like, I have, like, the, the energy shift, especially when he comes out, like, behind me. The energy goes where he is, so I go to where he is at, so I can get the energy back. Then I go ahead and chill out, like, because when he comes out, it's such a surprise, and he has so much energy, you know, in certain certain places, too. Like, when we we on tour, like, the anger management tour, it's incredible. That energy, when he walks out, it's like, pfft. Yeah, man. Yeah. But it's just fun. It's fun touring, period, you know, and... You know, don't let this guy be too modest over here. You know what I'm saying? Because I go where he goes, where that energy's at. You know what I'm saying? Because, it, you know, it's, it's a pretty even 
amount of energy. You know what I'm saying? Like he says that because he likes to feel. And so like, like no, you too. If y'all know y'all on the track together, y'all kind of like y'all y'all step your bars up for each other. Or? Well, you know, I, I usually it's it's like um when I when I've got on records behind them, I've I've had to rewrite verses before. Like, I wrote it, and then had to wait. Let me do that again. Because sometimes I did so fast that it isn't actually good enough to go against what he just put there. I only remember you doing that one time. Yeah, once. Once I did that. Well, I'm pretty sure. And the song was called Love Me. Love and me. And that's on the re-up. And that was off the 8 Mile, eight mile soundtrack. soundtrack. Okay. And the but the re-up is in stores tomorrow. The re-up is in And the re-up tomorrow. is a whole brand new set. Yeah. A whole brand new set of those. And also, I must mention that it took me a month and a half, but I hand-drew that art. You that, drew that that myself. myself. This was all you right yeah. here? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's what I get for Christmas and, like, for birthdays and stuff like that. Yeah. I got pictures all through my house that he hand-drew. So I put them up. And one day they're going to be worth, like, a billion dollars. You try to figure out, like... You always try to figure out, like, what can you get somebody who's already uh, already got something, you know? So, um, that was one of my second hobbies when I was little, yeah. was drawing, you know? And it's, it's cool, because it actually came from him sitting there taking the time to do it, so it's... Uh, it's a lot more thoughtful, a lot absolutely. more meaningful. That's what's more up. Time to do. Well, you know what? Pretty soon we're going to walk through the album, so y'all keep it right here. We got more with Eminem and Fifth. Get out. Now, Em, I know you got a lot of artists on this album. Was it competitive with everybody writing verses? It's definitely like a friendly competition type thing. You know, we got pretty much everybody from the Shady Camp. And, you know, if if you want to look at it like as in me and 50 being the selling points and using like OB Trice or uh, D12 as, you know, to set up those, you know, the new artists on the label. If you listen to the new artists on the label, the new artists got to show and prove more so than yeah. us. You know what I'm saying? Because they're new artists coming out. So, you know, that's why I say, you know, when you get the album, a lot of people are going to be surprised yeah. as far as... It's a know. perfect stocking stuffer, too. Well, you know what I mean? Go. It's Christmas time. You want something to give your people, you give them the real. All right, that's what's up. And then, of course, we got to look forward to your album. Yeah, my new album. Which is? Yeah. Before you self-destruct. Before I self-destruct. Now, yeah. where did you get the meaning be behind that? What, there has to be something behind that that you're building up inside. I, well, I spent a lot of time, like, during this record, feeling like the old me. And the old you would be? I mean, like, before money or before the music work. Okay. You know, so that's what's even got some of my actions, like... Even today, it might be a little different from my interactions with you before based on me thinking a certain way and being surrounded. I've been back and forth with my neighbor. i actually been staying at my grandmother's house. You know, so. Okay, so we got the re-up in stores tomorrow. We got 50 Self Destruct coming out next year. Yeah. Now, but we both know y'all are great actors. Y'all get your act on. How about movies? Anything popping off of both of y'all? Hey, well, I got a movie coming out on the 15th. It's on the 15th. It's myself, Samuel Jackson, Jessica Biel, Christina Ritchie, Brian Presley. Had a great director, Irwin Winkler's title, Home of the Brave. Y'all got to go check it out. It'll be out December 15th. How about you, Em? Any projects on the work? Any scripts you're reading right now? Um, I get a lot, of thrown, a lot of scripts thrown at me. And to be honest, I haven't had one hit me yet that's quite, you know, something that I really want to do more than the music thing you know music is my passion and like acting is like more so a, a hobby yeah. you know that's like a bigger challenge for me yeah. creatively yeah. be a yeah. part of a film project and i leave again in january to work with robert de niro on a film called new orleans so hey calm down well no we definitely wish all the best of luck of course you your album out tomorrow in stores the re-up go cop it we've got everybody in there and definitely, M, we welcome you back. We'd love to see you around more of there, baby. What so about come back. me? What invite about me back. You 50, always 50, around. You, 50, you hold always hold around. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And that was a clip from the last time you were here on 106. Tell us what comes across your mind when you see that. Kids don't do drugs. <laughs> were you, were you in, on yeah, drugs? What were was you? going on at that time? Yes, I was just a little wee bit under the influence on that, uh, on that particular clip. Well, one thing for sure is we're glad that you can even discuss it so openly because that by itself is something personal and you're able to open up to your fans about the addiction. Yeah. Tell us about that dark period in your life. 
Well, the crazy part about that clip, and I don't know if people believe me when I say this, but I don't remember being here. Like, I literally have no recollection of actually doing the show. I remember going home and watching it, but I just don't remember being here. But that's kind of, like, at that point, at that particular time, is kind of where I was at, so. How do you think things got so bad for you? I don't know. I mean, if I had to, like, try to mark a time period or whatever and try to figure out, like, where it actually went, I, I, I can't, it, it's hard for me to try to figure out where it went from recreation to a full-blown problem, you know, but, um, I mean, I think that it was a problem when I went to rehab in 2005, and, you know, I came out, and I, I wasn't really taking rehab serious, and I came out, I relapsed, and then, you know, the proof thing happened, and then I kind of just went way overboard, yeah, I just kind of lost it. How would you describe yourself as a person while you were on the drugs, and how do you describe the relationship you had with other people from your family, your friends, even your label mates? Well, I was, I was extremely um, distant, you know? I didn't really talk to nobody. I, I, I kind of just went off and just did my own thing, you know what I mean? I'd, I'd go home and shut the door, or I'd just go off into a bathroom somewhere, you know, pop a couple of pills and then be okay. And then you, But, you know, I was, a, I was a functioning addict, so I was kind of the worst, an addict of the worst kind. So nobody really knew what was going on. I think just people around me saw, like, something ain't right. You know what I mean? When we talk about the people that are around you, we know that you, Dr. Dre, and 50 Cent are really close friends, and they're also your business partners. What, what were they, what was their whole perception of what was going on with you? Did they know that you had an addiction problem, or? I think that, um, you know, when, when I ask, when I, when I talk to 50 and Dre about it, I think that they just, they, they felt like something wasn't right, but they didn't quite know at that time. You know what I mean? I, I just, I hit it really well, so. Was it kind of, because I'm sure that must have been hard for them to kind of even approach you on that, because that's something different. Yeah, I don't think anybody would have actually said anything at, at that point in time anyways, and I don't think anybody really could, you know? It was kind of a thing that I had to come to the realization of. So. Well, you've been clean for a year, and that by itself is an accomplishment. Congratulations on that. How did it take you to get to that point or what did it take for you to ultimately get to that point where you said I'm clean I'm getting clean well I had a, a pretty uh, pretty bad experience like uh, not last Christmas but the Christmas before and you know I, when I did the vibe article I kind of just came out and told everything but I actually overdosed on methadone which I didn't even know what I was taking at the time I didn't know it was methadone had a near-death experience where I literally almost died and then um, uh, came out the hospital and about a month later relapsed again and that's how I knew like this is a disease you know what I mean this isn't like this is not nothing to do with willpower like willpower is like I don't want that piece of cake over there you know what I mean so I'm not gonna eat it this is a different thing and I had to come to the realization that you know when, when I was ready to face it like I'm an addict you know what I mean then you know I and I was ready to get clean I think that it was it was overall it was like the overdose and then when I relapsed I kind of shot back up to the same point with the drugs that I was already at and it just scared me, so I just went to some friends who was just like, yo, I, I, I got a problem, I need help. Who were those friends? Well, I'm not going to say who those friends were. It was just people in my circle, you know what I mean? Just people that I trust. But. That's, that's understandable.